Hey everybody, today we're going to shoot a video about water hardness and the little dip tests you get to check for your water hardness and we're going to test a little bit about their accuracy and we're going to test a little bit about what they are actually testing for. But briefly on a side note, I shot a video yesterday where I did a little update on this tank. I noticed I had whole lots of little baby guppies swimming around in there and I could not remember whether I still had a female guppy in here or not. Uh, logic would have dictated that yes I must because there's new babies in the tank that weren't there before. They had to have come from somewhere but I could have sworn I removed the female guppies from this tank and put them all over into my angelfish tank but lo and behold there she is so yep I've still got a female guppy in this tank as again logic would have dictated. Anyway the point of today's video is I was thinking about the way those dip tests work. I know they're not terribly accurate when it comes to certain types of measurements, but I've never really used them, and I was curious about the water hardness. If you look in certain places, certain resources, if you go to your city's municipal water uh, website and you find the information about your municipal water, a lot of times the way they discuss water hardness and the way they discuss water hardness in the water industry, you know, the people that put the water softening systems in your home and work on your wells and things like that, they speak about water hardness differently than we in the aquarium hobby do uh, on some occasions. There's a little bit of a communications gap between the two uh, fields. So sometimes when you're looking online and you'll see a description of water hardness, it'll talk about parts per million and it'll give you these really, really vague guidelines of, you know, 0 to 50 parts per million is extremely soft and 50 to 100 is very soft and it's not complete information. The measurement of water hardness is the measurement of calcium and magnesium in the water and it also measures iron but in rare circumstances is there a significant amount of iron in the water it's usually the measurement of magnesium and calcium is what we think about as water hardness so I got to wondering about these hardness test strips when they dip are they simply checking for total dissolved solids are they checking for calcium? Are they checking for magnesium? What do they check for when they give you the hardness measurement? Again, this whole idea of just giving you this sort of parts per million is misleading. It depends on what those parts per million are. I intended on shooting a video about total dissolved solids and I think I'm going to shoot this video first and then I will later shoot the video of total dissolved solids. This will sort of be the opener. But let me just say that when you just give a generic parts per million and you're not specifically identifying what those parts are, you can't necessarily say you've got hard water because you've got 250 parts per million if those 250 parts per million are not calcium or magnesium. If you've got 250 parts per million of sodium, you still won't have hard water. So what would happen if we used one of these dip tests and we checked water that had a lot of sodium in it but didn't have any calcium or magnesium? Would we get hard water? Would it give us a generalized TDS count? I don't know, but I've set up a little experiment. I talked to the guy at my big chain pet store uh, yesterday. We've talked about this type of thing in the past, and yesterday he sent me home with a couple of their little dip test strips and one of their little sheets that tells you how to read them. And we're going to go over and we're going to do what I'm loosely going to call an experiment on my water, and we're going to see what these little dip test uh, strips say. All right, first of all, let me say, when I started reading this sheet, it breaks down and tells you how much of each, you know, whether it's ammonia or nitrite or nitrate, etc. When I started reading these and where they give you warnings and where they tell you to start being concerned and where it becomes harmful and so on and so forth, this sheet is worthy of an entire video 
all to itself. If you'd be interested in me breaking down one of these sheets, uh, let me know. This is the information that when, when you go to your, your big chain pet store, and I'm not going to say which one this is, but they're all basically the same, uh, and you let them check your water, and they say, oh, well, you've got this much of that, and then they give you advice. They're basing that on this, because these people don't get training in fish husbandry. They get employed by a big chain store, and they say you're working in the fish department. Here's what you need to know, and this is what they're going off of in more cases than not. So... If you'd be interested in hearing my opinion about what all of this says and means, let me know and I will do a video about it. For today, however, we are simply going to check the water hardness, which I believe is this one here. And the way we're going to do that is I have two test strips, so I don't have a lot of room for error or control. So what I've got is my tap water, and this is well water, so I don't have to worry about chlorine or anything like that. But it does go through a water softening system, and it adds sodium to the water and I'm just doing that more or less as a control so we can see that my TDS meter is working accurately. This is RO water and so are these and what we're going to do is we are going to mix some sea salt sodium chloride in one of these containers and then we're going to mix some magnesium sulfate into the other one and then we're going to test them with these dip tests. So in theory, this one will not show any hardness because I'm going to put sodium chloride in that and we will verify with a real general hardness and carbonate hardness test and we will see what that comes out at. It should be zero. But total dissolved solids will go through the roof once we put sodium in here. It'll be really interesting to see what this dip test does when it goes into the sodium chloride. This one will have the magnesium in it but no calcium and my friend at the fish store seems to think that this dip test probably works specifically on either calcium or magnesium not both and if that's the case it probably works on calcium because that's far more common uh, and more likely to be in your water than the magnesium so if it only checks for calcium then this glass shouldn't really make an impact on it either if it does check for the magnesium We'll see what it says as far as hardness. We'll be able to compare it once again to the real general hardness test and we'll see how accurate it is. We'll see, you know, we'll see what we can see. So that's how I'm going to do this. That's how we're going to set this up. Again, I know there's no real um, tightly controlled uh, scientific experiment or whatever, but that should give us a pretty good idea of what's going on. So before I get started on that, uh, let's have a look just so you all know what's going on with the water. This is my RO water. Should be about 15, 20 parts per million. Does that say 16? Likewise, this is all my RO water. 16 parts per million. <laughs> this is my tap water. 320 parts per million. 321 parts per million. So I will do a general N carbonate hardness test of my tap water just so we can see and then I'll do a general hardness test of the RO water and carbonate hardness which again is going to come out of zero but we'll do it anyway uh, and then we will do our two experiments we'll also do a general hardness test on both of them find out what these are then we'll test with these and see what these say so let me get started on all that and we'll see what the results are in just a minute. All right, I had to work my way through a little bit of a learning curve, but we got there in the end. Uh, but before I go any further, I do want to clarify that I was in no way bashing on the employees of these uh, big chain pet stores or whatever. It's not their fault, as I already explained. You know, these people are not marine biologists. They're not paid to be marine biologists. So, you know, don't be hating on the worker. It ain't their fault. But what I did with my learning curve, where I got it so wrong when I first started uh, tinkering with this stuff, was I did a teaspoon each of the sodium chloride and the magnesium sulfate. And anybody that's ever kept African cichlids and has mixed up, you know, the, the Epsom salts or whatever would probably immediately realize that a teaspoon of Epsom salts in that little tiny glass of water was a lot 
So I had to start figuring out how to scale it back and I wound up just using my TDS meter and I diluted it and diluted it and diluted it and eventually I got it down to where we're looking at about 217 parts per million magnesium in this glass. This has 235 parts per million sodium chloride, just regular old table salt, nothing added to it. That of course is my RO water that we started with that has about 15 parts per million in it. And then my well water has 318 parts per million in it. I checked all of the general hardness and carbonate hardness as I expected. I found everything where it should be. Got 4 degrees of carbonate hardness in my tap water, but 0 degrees general hardness, despite the fact that I have 318 parts per million total dissolved solids. I also found, as I suspected, in the water that only has sodium chloride in it, I got zero carbonate hardness, I got zero general hardness, yet we're still at 235 parts per million total dissolved solids. That's all sodium uh, and chloride. And in this one, we got zero degrees carbonate hardness, which you would expect. And then the Epsom salts that I put in there, the, the magnesium I put in there, at 217 parts per million brought us up to 12 degrees general hardness, and that is based on this. So now we are going to try these and see this one here is going to tell us our hardness, and let's see what we get. So the one on the manganese, or uh, magnesium, I don't know why I was going to call it manganese. I uh, didn't really get any instructions with these. I'm not really sure how long I'm supposed to let it sit, but we're already getting some color change there. And let's see, this is total hardness. And it looks like it's coming in somewhere in there. Mm. Not really sure what to make of where that's coming in doesn't really look to me like it matches anywhere. It looks too red. So it's somewhere up here in the 300 or upper 300s. And we're saying 217 parts per million magnesium. And all it tells me is it's very hard. So I wouldn't call 12 degrees of hardness very hard. And that is definitely going off this end of the scale. Uh, sorry about the camera work. I'm actually trying to read this uh, real time. I only have these two strips, so this is it. Um, so yeah, this isn't coming out very accurate to me. I'll try to hold this up a little better and see if we can all see it. Look at the color. Again, it's not really coming out of my phone. Look how red that looks compared to the brown on the paper. And then, of course, all the way down here, we get into grays and browns so I don't know where that red is coming from but that's what you get when you've only got magnesium sulfate in the water maybe if I would put some calcium in this water maybe we would have gotten a different reaction like I said if this only reacts to one stronger than the other then calcium would be it, not the magnesium. So that was an interesting result. It's not really clear what it says, but if it's anywhere near where it looks like on this scale, it's way higher than what the actual hardness is. The actual hardness is only 12 degrees, and that's not really hard. Uh, you're getting there, but that's not really hard at 12 degrees. All right, so let's try the one with just the sodium chloride. Now, this should come out as very soft. It shouldn't show anything uh, in the way of hardness and so far we're seeing no color change at all nope not the slightest bit of color change so it's definitely not measuring total dissolved solids and we know it's not measuring sodium chloride either but it doesn't seem to measure the magnesium accurately so let's now stick it in the magnesium and so you know what I'm gonna try one more thing I'm gonna put some calcium in some water and test this strip again and I know it won't be terribly accurate because we've already used it in water that's got the sodium in it but I'm still gonna do that and see if the calcium in the water doesn't give me a different result so let me get working on that and we'll see where that goes 
All right, well, the only readily dissolvable calcium I could find was an antacid tablet, and it is colored because it's flavored, but that shouldn't matter. It's just the calcium that we need to worry about, and dissolved solids are not the same as suspended solids, so even though it's only been about 20 minutes, and it's all gone, and it's just stirred around in the water, there's no actual antacid tablet in there anymore, the parts per million has only climbed up to about 70 parts per million, but that's almost entirely going to be calcium, so that should be more than enough to get a reaction out of this strip. The color started to change a little. You can see it's kind of pink around the edges as it dried out while it was sitting here waiting, so I don't know what it's going to do. We should get a pretty uh, immediate and strong reaction because that's just straight up calcium in here. So we're already getting color change, and it's already turning that weird reddish brown. Uh, it's interesting to note, I forgot to check the carbonate hardness, or on this little chart, it's called the alkalinity. Your alkalinity and your carbonate hardness is an interchangeable term. Uh, you can also use the term buffering capacity. All three of those are exactly the same. Your carbonate hardness is your buffering capacity, uh, and that is your alkalinity. It's all the same. And sodium chloride does not affect it, and neither test strip reacted to it. So the zero carbonate hardness showed up on this test accurately as well. So now we're getting a really, really red response to the amount of calcium. So again, just because my TDS meter is only showing up at 70 parts per million, this thing's basically got calcium piled up on top of it in that little drop of water that's sitting on there because I dissolved an entire antacid tablet into that water. So I expected a pretty severe uh, and immediate reaction, and indeed we got one. So it apparently reacts either to calcium or magnesium. I still don't think the magnesium was that accurate. I still think it was showing a much higher degree of hardness than was actually in the water. All right, don't forget, I will be shooting a video here soon about total dissolved solids in general. I know it can get complicated once you start getting into the weeds, but if you start from the beginning and kind of get an understanding of what it is and then go from there, uh, it becomes a lot less complicated, and it's all going to revolve around this little meter right there. There's a lot of people that swear by that and say that's the only tool you really need. Uh, I disagree with that. There are other people who say it's a worthless piece of junk that tells you nothing of uh, value. I disagree with that also, and I will explain why in an upcoming video. So make sure you're subscribed. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it. See you real soon in the next one.